Hey guys, what's going on? Hammer Tactical. Um, the weather in Ohio has decided that it still had a couple more days left of winter, so it went ahead and poured down some of that stuff for us. I'd much rather it have not snowed, but we're going to go ahead and make the best of it. Um, today, I am driving into town to spend some time with family, and then tomorrow we will be going and getting a new rifle. <gasps> new rifle time! I'm just dealing with this really crappy weather. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but like there's just sleep and crap coming down all over the place. So the new rifle I'm getting is a Savage, I think it's a 93, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I know, bad, right? But uh, it's a 17 HMR, it's got a wood stock, heavy, heavy barrel. Uh, I'm getting it from Sportsman's Den. They run like a super sale with like rebates and crap. I think it's like 200 bucks. Yeah, 17 HMR, box magazine, gold action, scope, nice wood stock, heavy barrel, 17 HMR. I'm repeating myself, but yeah, it's a great freaking deal. I'd be silly not to get one. Plus, I don't have one yet. <gasps> Can you believe that? There's a caliber, even a small caliber that I don't own. That's kind of weird. Well, I don't own a 25. Or 32. Dang, there's some, there's some more guns I gotta get. Um, I do plan on trying to get quite a few every year. And some of the stuff that I get, you guys might think, well, that's dumb. But hey, man, you know, I, I'm also a collector. And first and foremost, I'm a gun enthusiast and I like to shoot crap. Uh, so the 17 h more I feel, is gonna be a really good option for me for blasting blackbirds and whistle pigs and whatnot like that. But uh, last weekend I went to go get it and they put me on delay. It happens probably mm, every other time that I go to get a uh, firearm now. And what's funny is like there's been times when I've been on delay for a certain firearm and then I go back and I purchase a different firearm and they let it go through. Um, I'll get back with you guys and uh, we'll check out this new rifle, see how she shoots. Okay guys, <clears throat> so here she is. I'm trying to show you some of this marbling and stuff going on here. I mean, it's, it's cool looking wood. I like it. It's kind of getting bright over here. Let's go down here. It is a 20 and a half inch heavy barrel. Let's see if we can show you this. It is uh, the button cap. So that's cool. Let's go up here. It came with this generic scope. Uh, it says it's a true glow. There's no real markings on it except for down here at the bottom. There's like a little triangle. All right, so uh, let's see if we can give you a better look. It's a pretty gun. I am pretty happy with it. Pardon the mess, fellas. The gun bench is all messed up. Had some friends using the gun lab here recently. And it's a mess. From what I'm gathering, it's the same exact gun as like the Mark II. But this one comes with the Boyd stock. <clears throat> and it just says it's OEM. Uh, Mark II something something something. When I was looking it up online, they were showing that this is the 93, uh, what do they call it? The 93R17GV. I don't know. I'm happy with it. It's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> it does have a detachable box magazine. I believe this is like a five or a seven rounder. I haven't lowered it or shot it yet. Kind of lame. But the weather today just flat out sucks. The action, it's all right, but it's nothing super smooth yet. You can see right there, there's just packaging grease. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, clean her up, tighten stuff up, uh, bore sight the scope, and uh, I'll get right back with you.
There we go. Good night. I'm not happy with this. If I break it, oh well. Just buy better stuff, right? This is the free scoop that came with it. When you do this, you want to do a crisscross pattern. Starting up here, 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 and here. What we're going to do now is remove the bolt. Anytime you're really working with it, it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and drop your mag and make sure everything's safe. I know it is, I mean, brand new gun, but that's how accidents happen. Take it off safety. We're going to depress the trigger and that will release the bolt. Being brand new, it's gonna have a lot of uh, nasties on it from packaging. So what we're going to do, um, this is kind of off camera, we're gonna use some uh, Oda CLP 085. Now I use these Q-tips, they're precision tips. Uh, you can get them in like the makeup aisle. I find them to be pretty good because they come to a point instead of being like you're rounded over, they're more tightly woven. So what we're gonna do here, open this bad boy up. Goodness. Well, brand new. Let's use the other bottle. Okay, now I'm gonna take some of this, get all that on there, and just wipe her down. Can get all the nasties off of production oils. They said the barrel is a carbon barrel. So they're on the website, they don't really give any real information about it. They're just like, it's a gun. Get all of that all cleaned up and pretty fine. You just want to get some of the grease off from production. Um, it's not actually like a lubricant for shooting. Some people they think, oh, it's a brand new gun, no reason to clean it. It's not true. Not true at all. You can, some people do, but it's better to go through and thoroughly rinse all that stuff off and put on real gun oil. If you don't, uh, you're liable to hit like some malfunctions. Um, just normal stuff and sometimes during break-in it'll go ahead and work its own way out but I like doing this all right so once that's done like that go ahead and grab yourself a paper towel some people suggest wearing gloves Probably should, wouldn't hurt. Go through and try to get all that stuff off. See all that? And yeah, there's some rust on there. There's, it's just packaging oil. Then we are going to go with a, hmm, on this uh, Otis CLP, it's all right, but I prefer having something a little, like it doesn't seem to be the most luby type thing, so. I'm going to go ahead and switch here over to uh, just a Hops Gun Medic. It's generic, but it's a good all around lube. And what I'm going to do is, well, I'll show you. I'm just going to take the bolt and using the aerosol can, just and that's it. Put a nice film on it, don't cake it up. Just see where it dripped right there already. I'm gonna kind of shake it, like a salt, salt shaker, like a Polaroid picture. Yeah, right there, boom. That's all I'm gonna put on it. There's still a little bit on there. Um, I will go ahead and just finessingly, just, ah, I don't wanna put a whole bunch in there, but just, just a little bit in there. That was way too much. Woo, doggy. The stuff, I mean, that spray is crazy. So then I'm gonna take, 
Q-tip and kind of try to evenly disperse it in there. Eh, should be good. Yeah, see? It's a little black in there already too, so whatever. And then putting your bolt back in, what you're gonna do is go ahead and just line it back up. Then depress the trigger and it slides right in. I like to cycle it a couple of times because I like guns. And also I feel like it helps kind of get the lube swished around a little bit so it's covering better. It still sounds a little metallic-y in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give her another quick blast of this Hops number nine gun medic. This stuff is crazy potent fast coming out of there. It's all Ricky Bobby. Oh, there we go. That was that spot. And now this sucker is just... Slickery. That's what I like. I want that to be all fast actioning like that. Something else I like to do is go ahead and turn the gun over and let's remove the action from the stock. That way we can get underneath the barrel and clean that out. Uh, that way there is no residue or oils or contaminants or rust, you know, kind of want to make sure. On this particular rifle, it is a metric number four. And what you want to do, this action screw in between your trigger guard and the back of your uh, magazine well. You want to go ahead and unscrew this. It shouldn't be in there that tight. And then your front screw, which is in the front of your magazine well, it's also a four millimeter. I'll go ahead and take this out. Oh, action's already starting to fall. Okay, so that doesn't have to come all the way out if you prefer not to take that. There we go. So now we have the stock, and this stock is, see if you can see it. It's a Boyd stock, you can see it right here. Uh, what we're gonna do, kind of generic, but it's the easiest way to accomplish what I'm talking about. We're just gonna take one rim oil wipe. And take it, and we're just gonna wipe down the barrel. Oh gosh, I'm glad I did that right away. Look at, look at all that rust coming off of that. Brand new gun, you know? So, go ahead and clean it all the way up here. Try not to hit your scope wins. Oh man, this is quite embarrassing, really. Brand new. Look at that. Um, we're gonna go in for a second rim wipe here in a second. We're gonna wipe down everything while I got this out. Because that's just, over time, I mean, yeah, you know, that's going to rust. It might not be a super big issue, but I prefer not to have barrel pitting and stuff like that. Oof. Got a trash can down there. Still getting some off, but it's not nearly as bad as what it was. Okay, so careful not to depress the trigger because you don't want to dry fire a rim fire rifle. You guys have seen me dry fire a lot, but I try not to dry fire anything like this. Can you see this? Okay, so I'm gonna go up here, just wipe everything down, get that bolt knob. The bolt knob, you're going to touch that more than anything on this, more than likely, and it will rust. So go ahead and clean that all up, get that nice. It's pretty cool construction in here. I'll show you guys here in a second. And this does have the AccuTrigger, 
which is adjustable. I tend to just go with the factory setting on these ones. On my other rifles, I'll adjust them down to like a, see, in there is pretty clean. But on other rifles, I'll go ahead and I'll adjust them down to two and a half pounds or so sometimes. Or if it's a, you know, a rifle I'm going to be walking around with, I prefer it to be a little bit heavier on the trigger pull just in case. Prevent accidents. All right, but uh, I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys. what we're working with down inside there. It's pretty good quality. Um, I've always been a Savage fan, and I will be for pretty much ever until we start having issues. Now putting it back together, it's pretty simple. Um, I'll just show you guys how I normally do it. I just take it, drop your trigger guard through the hole, line that up, and fan dangle wiggle. In the back, there's a, a lug back here. Not sure if you'll be able to see it. But right down, yeah, that lug has to go down in the hole. And then boom, you're right in there. Squeeze her down, make sure she's tight. And we'll go ahead and see if we can start threading that in. And take your rear screw, put it back in. Have your Allen wrench. don't need to over torque these. Something else you want to do is before you tighten them all the way down, make sure that everything is sitting down in there where it should be. You don't want to force anything where it shouldn't. Okay, so everything looks pretty good back there. Trigger looks right down here in the guard. Let's go ahead and flip her back over and we will snug these down. I'd say I'm going about 10 pounds or so. 10 inch pounds, not foot pounds, make sure. And on this, you don't want to go super hard because you can risk cracking your stock. Up here, this plate acts kind of like a washer, so you can go a little bit snug. And right now, uh, we're pretty much done. I will run a, uh, a wipe through it. But right now, I actually don't have a rod small enough to go into a 17 caliber. So I'm gonna have to get something like that. I'll probably just drip some oil down there for right now. And uh, that'll be good. But just felt like I should show you guys uh, my process of getting a new gun. And what I think you guys should maybe think about doing as well. Thanks for watching, Hammer Tactical.